Hey Facebook, Steve Woody here. Welcome to Midday Mastery episode number 29. And today we're going to be talking about focus. And also, I'm just going to touch very quickly on something exciting that got released yesterday, and that is Apple Pay. So if you know about Apple Pay and you use Stripe, you can now use Apple Pay if you have Stripe. Really, really exciting. It come out, I got the email, it happened whilst I was doing my Facebook Live, so I didn't get a chance to talk about it yesterday, which would have been perfect because yesterday was talking about the checkout process and merchant gateways and everything that we was going through yesterday, it really ties in. So, just very quickly, if you have WooCommerce on your website, if you're using WordPress and you have WooCommerce, which is why I've got the Woo t-shirt on today to support the guys, it's a great job what they've done, they've linked it up. So if you update WooCommerce, get this Stripe plugin for WooCommerce. It's free. So you get free WooCommerce, free Stripe plugin. If you then update that Stripe plugin, it will now have a new option that says Apple Pay. Now there's a step. There's something you need to do to make this work. You need to log into Stripe. So you must log into your Stripe account. Okay, so we're talking about if you've got WooCommerce uh, and you've got the Stripe plugin, they both need to be updated. Okay, then you need to log into Stripe and you need to go to payments. When you go to payments, you'll see on the top tab there'll be a thing that says Apple Pay. It's new. You click on Apple Pay, what you can do is you can put in your domain name. Whatever the domain name is for your website, put that in there. It will ask you to go through a process, just click yes, put in the domain name. Once you put in the domain name, so Log into Stripe, into Payments, into Apple Pay, put in the domain name, and then once you've updated WooCommerce and Stripe, now, like if you get, I'd, I'd show you, but I'm on the phone, so I kind of can't do it. But if you go to my website, onlinemastery.co.uk, and you go to purchase anything, and you're on a phone or an Apple, any Apple related browser, um, so I think it's like anything, if you use Safari on a desktop, I think you can use it. Uh, if you're on a phone, an iPhone or anything, then you can check out. And you can just, it's like, do you want to check out and fill in all the details? Or it just says, check out with Apple Pay. One click. I did it on my phone yesterday. It was brilliant. Use my fingerprint scanner on my phone. Boom. Done. Checked out. Like, I managed to buy a product for myself in seconds. It was beautiful. Really, really, really good process. So something I'd highly recommend checking out. Rhett, hello. Nice to see you, my friend. Uh, that would explain why you weren't on our Zoom call. Uh, got a great view of your elbows. Claire, I am so sorry. I logged into the Zoom room and I actually have it on my screen here. Um, in fact, I have a message from you as well on here. I don't know why that lecture. Like, here's the thing, right? I have my uh, my booking software. It's really, really good booking software. It allows me to link into my shopping cart. However, it will not, for some reason, it hasn't allocated my midday sessions. And so, when I was looking for people for my podcast to talk to, it allowed everyone to book in at midday. I did my Facebook Lives at midday. I'm like, ah, so I, let me just uh, be the first to say, Claire, I'm really, really sorry. I should have uh, connected with you. I did look through and try and email you beforehand. Please do check your emails to make sure. I know it was late notice. I apologize. I am um, in the process of hiring some staff at the moment to help me. I just can't keep up with everything that's going on. There's too much going on at the moment. And as a result, my admin is starting to slip. My emails are starting to slip. My clients are messages. I'm, I'm doing my best. I'm doing my best. But I am only me, um, and, you know, and all my other team are doing their things. But that brings me on perfectly into a lovely segue about today's talk, which is about focus. And specifically, what are you focusing on? Like, as an example, which we've just mentioned, and as Claire has so brilliantly just explained, I was meant to have a call with her today at 12 o'clock on Zoom. And I'm looking at my screen right now, and I can see the Zoom window, and she's just getting a, a view of my elbows because of the way the camera's pointed. So, unfortunately for me, my admin is starting to slip. And the reason it's starting to slip is because I'm focused on other things. So, what are you focused on? For example, let me just say this. If you're a business owner, okay... If you're a business owner, then your focus should be on your business, yeah? If you're a web developer, then your focus should be on web developing, okay? If you're a content creator, then your focus should be on creating content. Guess what? If you're a designer, then your focus should be on design. 
A business owner should not be focusing on design. Really simple. Okay, a web developer should not be focusing on content. All right, a business owner should have an overview of all of these things because that is their role. But a business owner, if you own something, this is not a business operator. It does not mean that you, as a business operator, should be doing the website development, should be creating the content, and should be doing the design. Because the thing is, the reality, if you're a business owner, what is your business? Put in the comments below, let me know, what do you do? What do you do? What is your business? What is your mission? What is your purpose? How do you make your money? What do you do? Like, I know, for example, with uh, Vince, I know you're on here, I know you have a telephone service, TPS. Um, I, I know that you are a English teacher. So as an English teacher, you teach English. Okay, so to teach English, that's not, that's, you're a teacher. Okay, you're not a web developer. You're not a designer. All right, you do create content, I get that. But the idea is to understand what you're doing and why you're doing it and focus on what you're good at. I know far too many people now, and this is a challenge that I keep seeing. Sorry, my uh, camera's slowly starting to move. Um, I see far too many people these days trying to do everything. Like trying to be like this jack of all trades, master of none. And the reality is that the only way that you actually get to move forward and progress is when you pick something, you say, do you know what, I'm going to focus on that. That's going to be my goal. That's my outcome. So what are you focusing on? I'm a teacher, but I do web dev, right? Manage my business. Well, this is the thing, right? You are doing far too many things, my friend. And you need to hone it in and be more specific. And the reason I say that is because you're already overwhelmed and stressed. You've got far too much going on. Not only with your family life and your teaching life, but learning this and doing that. And I, I admire you for it. And I think it's a great thing to do. But the point I'm trying to get here, and I'm kind of using extremism to do it, is that whilst the camera's sort of slanting off, sorry, I've got this... Um, issue today with my monkey pod but published is better than perfect right and plus it's live so hopefully that will hold um the whole purpose of this is that you need to focus on what's best for you like what's the thing that you do in your business because for most people being a business owner you should have an overview of all this like i totally agree as a teacher you should teach right and you should have an overview of all of this but the only reason that you are doing all of these things in your own business Really, really simple. Something that Derry taught me when I went on his course, I got, quite, um, I got certified as what's called a CCM. So that's for Coach, Consultant, Mentor. And one of the things that Derry taught me in these two days, very, very important, there are two things, two things that will screw your business. You can uh, chunk it up, down, whatever you want, but these two things, very, very simple. Cash and talent. That's it. Cash and talent. If you are doing everything in your business, it's because you don't have the cash to hire the right talent. It's as simple as that. The reason you're doing so many different things is because you don't have a team around you. You don't have the right team around you. And if you have a team around you, but you don't have any money, then look, here's the thing. You can't get talent without cash because you have to have the money to pay the right people. If you've got bad talent, then it's going to... You know, it's going to be obvious because you're not going to have the cash coming in. If you've got good talent, good talent will make you money. But you need the money to make the talent. It's like Catch-22, right? So how do you get out of it? Most people start on their own. Start a business and start doing all of this stuff on their own. But where do you draw the line? When do you stop? When do you say, actually, do you know what? I'm at a point now where I need to bring someone in. Kind of exactly where I am at the moment. I need to look at the areas of my business. What am I focusing on at the moment? Right, well, I am focusing on my clients, okay? So a lot of my time and attention goes on to my clients. I'm also focused at the moment on support because I'm doing a lot of support for a lot of things that I've got. I'm also doing all of my own marketing, i.e. vis-a-vis Facebook Live. I'm also writing my new courses, okay? I'm also developing my own site. I'm also doing a lot of the design work. So, as a result, I'm like, whoa, far too much. I'm doing all my own admin. Yeah? So, what do I need to do? First thing I need to do, right, design. That's not my strong point. I need to outsource that. Great. I've got River. I've got Mark. I've got a few other people now who are working on the design process. Um, I've just started, well, I'm about to start work with a company called Monkey Mad. Uh, I'm not going to talk about that. I'll talk about that in another video. I don't want to get into that. But a guy called Rich Clayton, a phenomenal guy, amazing guy. I'm going to start working with him on some projects. So now, I don't have to do that anymore. Great. Development. 
I've got Jack, I've got another Jack, I've got another guy who I had a conversation with today, some amazing conversations at the moment, people. I don't do dev anymore. Right, so, the things that I used to do, given I used to be a web developer, I don't do that anymore. I don't do the design anymore. Creating my con courses, yes, I absolutely must do that, because that has to be me. So that's an area I need to focus on. So I'll put a little one by it. What else am I doing at the moment? Support. Is it possible for me to outsource my support? Maybe, but I need to educate and train someone, so I need to create the, con the material for the support team so they have that. So yes, I can outsource that, and I'm looking to do that, but before I do that, I need to create a course for the support. Make sense? Like, where am I focusing at the moment? Marketing. Yes, absolutely, I could hire someone to manage all of the marketing for me, and I'm looking at that at the moment. I've been constantly looking at people that can do that, but right now, I'm doing it myself. All right, and so the good thing about where I am at the moment is because of the way that I've positioned my business, I don't need to market anymore at the moment. I will keep this going and I will keep all of this stuff going, but I, I turned to, I, yesterday, you know, I, I, uh, if you remember a few days ago, I, I talked about uh, the potential of having this new client. I was going to take 25% of any deal that he got, he was going to pay me a flat fee, he said, yep, yeah, we're ready to go, so I sent all the stuff through for him, and he was like, whoa, I'm not sure what you're sending through, and I was like, well, this is everything, you know, this is where we are, and where we want to go, and what we want to do, and he's like, but we really want to focus in this area, and I was like, okay, that's cool, that's not me, I said, I don't want to focus on that area, that's not what I do, I said, if you put money in that area, you're going to waste it. And he was like, yeah, but that's what we know. And I was like, yeah, but you're not hiring me because of what you know. You're hiring me because of what I know. And I'm telling you what you need to do. And they didn't quite, and they just didn't understand it. It was a miscommunication. I was trying to bring them into my six-week course. And I was, I was so focused on, I'm so focused on my six-week course that I'm not marketing and I'm not doing anything to bring new clients in. So when I tried to bring them into my new course, it was a little bit clunky. There wasn't a good process for them to go through. And I, I said it up front. I said, look, you can join this course but it's just, it's, you know, I don't, I don't want to work one-on-one -on -one with you. I want to work with the 20 people that I've got. I want to whittle it down to 10 and then, because on the 1st of May, I'm only working with 10 people. And then the 1st of July, I'm just working with four people. So I've got 20 people, tw t uh, 10 people, four people. That's my focus right now. That's going to take me up to July. So to bring someone else in, yeah, it would have been fantastic. Who doesn't want to earn an extra 10 grand a month, 15 grand a month? It would have been ideal. However... I would have then had to shut off all of the stuff I'm currently doing with the people that I'm doing it with. I would not have been able to focus my attention on both. So I have to look at what's more important to me. Now I'm nurturing a handful of clients right now and building them up and getting them to the point where ideally I want to be charging each of them 25 grand a month. The four clients that I take on in June or in July, I want to, in an ideal world, be earning them six figures a month. And if I can get to that place, and they're earning six figures a month, then I'll be able to quite happily say, do you know what? You can pay me 25 grand a month because we're earning you 100. That's my big picture, right? Maybe I'll get there, maybe I won't, but that's my vision, my goal. That's where my focus is right now. So my focus is on, right, what do I need to do to achieve that? It's not design, all right? It's not development. They're not things that are going to get me to that place. So I needed to, and yesterday was a great example. So I turned around to the client after the conversation. I said, look, I don't think it's right that we start this right now. I don't think this is right for you. And that was a really hard thing to turn down, but a really easy thing to say no to. Like to say, do you know what? I'm not trying to sell you anything. And here's an interesting thing. I was like, look, I've got no dog in this fight. I'm not trying to sell you anything. This is not, and, and he turned around on the call. Uh, we had a, a group call with the directors and he said, you're obviously a very good salesman, you know, saying you're not very good at salesman. Really, you are. I said, if I was good at sales, I wouldn't have got divorced. Like, you know, the whole reason that I'm where I am now, I've struggled with this. I had to like dive deep inside myself and internally work on some of my limitations to overcome them so that I can say, do you know what? Yeah, I'll sell now. I'm not saying I'm good at selling, but I'm, I'm confident in what I do. And because of the confidence in my ability, because I know what I do, and because I know what my focus is, because my focus is so, it's just so strong right now. I have, not, like, if, it, if it's not a right fit, it's not a right fit. I'm not going to try and take work on just to try and earn money. Because then what happens is, what this is this is what happens. You do something that you don't really want to do. Let's take development, for example. Right? I'm going to use this as the example. So with development, let me just, uh, like, I don't have enough room right on this board, but let me just make some space. Let's take development. So you build a website, but it's not what you want to do, all right? You want to focus, let's say, on the marketing. But to do the marketing, you first got to build a site, okay? Because you have to 
build it before they can come. So you're focusing your attention on development, and this is where you're getting your money at the moment. You're not getting any money here, but you know that once you're doing this, this will bring you in more money and you'll enjoy it and it's what you want to do. And the problem is, how many clients do you take on here because this also takes time, right? Each one of these takes a specific amount of time. The more you get caught up on the surface level for that stuff, the stuff you don't want to do, the less chance you have to do on the foundation level, the bigger stuff, the deep down going on doing the things you want to do. So the question is, every time you take on a new client here, you're, you're taking time away from doing things down here. And that's where you have to decide what you're going to focus on. I'm looking to bring in someone to do the admin so I don't have to do it. One, because I don't really want to do it. And two, because it's, it's, it's the same example, you know. Like, why would you have a cleaner in your house? And, and, and it comes down to the point, if you can pay somebody £10 an hour to clean your house, and you can charge £20 an hour for your time, then surely that hour will be better spent with a client, a paying client, that pays you £20 an hour and you pay the cleaner £10 an hour. It's leverage. It's outsourcing. It's like, it, it's, it doesn't make you a snob. It doesn't, like, you, don't, you know, if, you, if you're going around going, my cleaner's doing my house and my chef is cooking, then yes, you look like a twat. But don't do that. You don't need to do that. I mean, I've done it and I know other people do. It's nice to be able to share it. But the reality is, we're not doing this to go, my admin person's taking care of it. Let me book you in with my secretary. Yeah, we don't want people like that. That's not why we're doing this. We're doing it because you're like, right, this is my focus. This is what I want to do. What are the things I'm currently doing? And what do I need to cross out? What are the things that, like, obviously don't cross out clients. You kind of need to be the person working with them. Unless... You know, you've got high paying and low paying, and the low paying ones maybe you can automate or outsource. Just look at what you're doing. Take the weekend, right? Whatever you're doing this weekend, if you've got time, have a look. Just write down, where do I spend my time? What am I doing? What is taking my time at the moment? What's like frustrating me? What's taking a lot of time? Is it development? Is it design? Is it marketing? What am I struggling at? Where can I bring people in? How can I find people? How can I leverage the talent? Because like, if you haven't got the cash, then you will have to do stuff yourself. But you don't have to do everything. You know, you don't need to worry about design. You don't need to worry about dev. You can get a sales page, a sales funnel, something very quick and simple up, click, 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 done, 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 get some money coming in, and then reinvest that money into a team that can take you further. Like, that's all I really want you to focus on this week. Focus on doing the things that you need to do to get the outcome you want, and not necessarily the short-term outcome. I mean, don't sabotage yourself but just look 6, 12, 24 months down the line. Where do you want to be? See, I'm looking ahead 6 to 12 months at where I want to be. And the reason I'm doing all of this marketing is because I'm pushing people. I'm, I'm, I'm pushing people to better themselves. I'm pushing people to, to do things that's going to help them. I'm doing all of this because I'm looking. I'm looking for four clients. I don't know who those four clients are. I thought that yesterday that could have potentially have been one client. Great, because I even said to him, look, I want to charge you 25 grand a month. I was hoping to bring them in somewhere in the region of between 900 to 1.2 million a month. That was what I was looking at. Like, that's where I'm looking there. I'm not going to do that with startups sitting around a table discussing what product they should create. I just, I need to look at where I am. However, I really fucking love startups and I want to help people because I've struggled throughout my entire adult life with money and dealing with shit. And so if somebody wants to create something, then I want them to have all of the tools, I want them to have all of the knowledge and strategy that they need to do that. That's what this video is about. That's what my book's about. That's what my online courses are about. Helping the people that I can't actually help, that I can't give my time to, but I can still give my knowledge and resources to. That's my focus, that's what I'm doing, that's why all of my stuff's coming together the way it is right now. So my question is, what are you doing? What are you doing in your business and in your life to focus on to get you where you need to be? That's it, guys. That's all I've got for you today. Focus. Let's focus on getting that list of all of the things that you're spending your time on. Do that over the weekend, and I will speak to you on Monday. Sarah, thank you. Gail, good to see you. Oh. Boom. Mic drop. I'm following people. Rhett, I hope you mean you're following people on Twitter or maybe Instagram and not literally like with a hoodie on down the road, because that's quite scary and... I don't know who to contact about that. Um, when you say you're following people, what do you mean? <laughs> Let me know. Um, 
We can't do everything. Rhett, we can't. And here's the other thing. It's not the fact that we can't do everything. We can definitely do a lot, but we can't do everything really well. You know, if you're creative, you can't be logical at the same time. You can do one or the other, and you can have a balance, but someone who's obsessively creative isn't going to be obsessively logistical. It's just they don't match, you know? I mean, you get a few that do it, but if you want, like, to be, if you want to stand out, if you want to make a difference, then you need to be great in a lot of different areas. You, it's not possible for one person to be great in a lot of different areas. You need to have a team or, or people you can rely on. I mean, outsourcing, like, there are, there are enough... Like, you can go on to, like, um, Upwork, and you can hire an amazing team of people on Upwork. I went on to Upwork, and I kissed thousands of frogs. I went through so many bad people, and I realised it was all my fault. I took ownership for it. It was all my fault. The reason it was all my fault is because I wasn't vetting them properly. I wasn't putting a good enough description up. I wasn't taking them through a qualification process before I hired them. I was just like, uh, you'll do taking the first person that come out and said they were willing to work with me. And that's why I ended up going through so much pain. Now I have a very, very, very intense screening process when I work with someone. You know, I get them to do things and, any, and there's like four or five points. And if they fail at any of those points, pff, we're done. I'll give them feedback and let them know they failed and why, so that hopefully they can improve, but I'm done. Like there's no coming back from that for me because the, I'm not looking to build friendships in my business. I want to build friendships, of course. But I'm not looking to train people up in my business. I'm not looking to, at the moment, I'm not looking to teach an intern this right now. Where I am right now is I want people who already know it, who I can pay and get value. It's services for value. I'm paying someone and I want a result for that. And so I have to have a pay, don't get me wrong, there are times when I'm like, I want to educate and train people and I want to bring an intern and, and, and bring them up. But just not now. My focus right now is on my clients. My focus is building up my piggy bank so that I've got some money behind me so that I don't have all of the debt and stuff to pay off so that I can say, right, do you know what? Now I can bring in the talent that I need and I can pay them really well and I can bring in my staff and I can create the company and online mastery can grow to where it needs to be. Right, that's my focus. That's what I'm doing. For me to do that, obviously I've got to find those four clients first. I decided that rather than going out and just trying to pitch for 25k a month clients, I would nurture and build them from a starting point or a low point uh, where they're actually getting started, I would find the people that I think are going to go forward, that are going to do stuff. I've got some amazing people I'm working with. If I can build them up, they're going to stay with me. Why wouldn't they? If I'm bringing them in more money, why wouldn't they stay with me? And we just keep up in the level. Just keep up in the level. Until we get to a point where we're like, great, this is where we're comfortable. So there's nothing wrong with building people up and there's nothing wrong with pe bringing people in. You just need to understand where you are and focus on the things that are important to you. Uh, have an amazing day guys, I'm going to end this here, I'm just looking through some of the comments, I've got no cash but all the talent baby, yeah, <laughs> um, right, yeah, I know mate, I know you're doing it with yourself fella, and, and this is the thing, when you say that, um, you know, it's like, you're an amazing teacher, right, you're a great teacher, I have no doubt, I've seen your stuff, I think it's brilliant, but you're not a developer, and and, and so, you can do it as a hobby, you can do it for fun, but you should focus on teaching. And, you know, you're good at creating content and you're good at doing those things. And the design you've got, like, I don't know if you do the, your design yourself. Rick, do you do your design yourself or do you have someone do it for you? Because your illustrations and animations, they're brilliant. They're amazing. This makes great sense. I'm also looking to bag my first few clients. Simon, then I would just, yeah, I, I mean, look, you, you know what you're good at. Like, and I'm not talking about perceived, like, value. I'm talking about, like, internal, like, you know, you... You have to go to bed at night and know that you've done a good job. Otherwise, you're not going to sleep well. Maybe you will. I don't know. It depends. But for me, personally, like, I can't take on work. That I'm, like, the, the reason that I turned the client down yesterday was because they wanted to focus on Google AdWords. Like, they specifically, they've got a budget, they've got a big budget, and they're already putting into Google AdWords. I don't, I don't want to get involved in Google AdWords. I'm not interested in that. I'm not interested in SEO. I'm interested in social media marketing because I can see the power it has and I see the impact it has. Now, that, that's not right for everybody. Not everybody should be social media marketing. It's not right for everyone. I mean, there's people who are not on social media. You know, if you're, if you're looking to get into the director level of some big corporations, chances are you're not going to find them fucking about on Twitter and Facebook. But you might find some of their staff on there. You may be able to get the message up to them that way. It might be that you need to be on a different platform or doing a different thing, going to networking events, going to dinners and things. There's like other ways to do things. So I'm more about leveraging the marketing budget, digital marketing budget, what platforms do you need to use. 
Now, the way that this client wanted to go, they wanted to go into AdWords. I know AdWords isn't right for them. I can see what they're doing, I know what they're doing, I can see exactly where they need to be. I even said to them, for free, like I said, look, this is what you need to do. Go and do it. You don't need me. Go and do it. And they're like, no, but we need you to help. And I was like, well, I'm here. But this is what it's going to cost. And they said, but we want someone that's going to implement it all for us. I said, great. I said, I know a guy. I'll put you in touch. He costs 20 grand a month. Speak to him. Because I'm charging you like a grand for six weeks. And I was charging you like five grand so you could put a budget aside. And I was charging you like to get you to this point because this is where I want you to go. I'm like, I understand. Do you know what I mean? If you want someone that can do it all, that knows what they're doing, it's going to get the results. You've got to be prepared to pay for it. Anyway, I'm going to leave it there. I'm reading through all the comments. I pay people, I have employees. Boom. Exactly. Episode 29. Oh my God, you've been busy. Michael, 29 days. Consistently. Let me just say that again. Consistently. I have been focusing on my midday masteries and saying that is, this is what I'm going to do. I don't like writing blogs. That's why if you've got my blog, there's not a lot of stuff on there. I don't like writing blogs. I like writing when I have a chance to sit down and relax, but for me, video content, getting in front of the camera, talking to you guys, this is my focus. So if you take... This, and I'm going on a tangent now, but if you take, for example, let me just give you this really quickly before we go. I'll be really quick. Right, let's just say marketing, right? Sorry, that pen doesn't work very well. Look at your focus, right? So where are you focusing your marketing efforts right now? You've got a blog, right? You've got social, oh, media, marketing, right? You've got pay-per-click. You've got offline. You've got SEO. Anything else? Give me some other examples. Where can people focus? Look at where people can focus their marketing efforts. Where, where can we else can we go with this? So we've got uh, word of mouth. Uh, offline can be obviously anything. You've got events, things like that. Um, affiliates. Well, we'll leave that as word of mouth for now. Um, that gives you an idea, right? Now the question is, exactly the same as this, where are you focusing your attention at the moment when it comes to marketing? Where do you focus your attention? Like for me, I wasn't focusing any attention on my blog, so why do it? What's the point? I could hire someone to do my content creation for me, and I could hire someone to repurpose, but right now, I have more important things to deal with. I'm not interested in my blog right now. That is not a focus for me. My focus right now is clearing off all of the 50k debt and making sure that I've got my clients and that they're happy and that I'm serving people in that way. And so for me, this is not something I enjoy doing. It's not something I want to do. It's, it's not an area. And I don't want to hire anyone to do it at the moment. So I just don't do it. It just sits there. Then that's fine because I acknowledge that. Pay-per-click. So I do some pay-per-click, but at the moment, why invest money in it? I'm full up. I don't take any more clients. I mean, yeah, I could push people to my book and I could keep my funnel going and I could do things like that, but it's turned off at the moment. Don't need to. I'm not in a position where I need to do that right now. When I finished my six-week course, so middle of April, um, yeah, sort of beginning of April, should we say, I will turn this back on and I will start to focus more energy on this because I will be looking to attract people to come into my May course. Guess what I'm doing right now, talking to you and telling you about this? I'm seeding, I'm telling you right now, all the time I'm talking to people, not doing anything till May, not doing anything till May. Now, don't forget, I've got 20 people up here who are in the or going through the course already. Three of them are already coming into the May course. So now, there's only seven spaces left. Guess what? Scarcity. <gasps> who wants to work with me in May? So that isn't going to take that much. I'm not going to have to put that much attention in there because at the moment, I'm focusing all my attention here. All of my Facebook Lives, everything I'm doing, getting my attention out there, giving back, helping, I'm always, always, always looking at who are the right people to come through this into my May course. When people go through my workbook, I know who I want to work with before they do because I can see everything they're doing. I can see all the ways they're interacting. I don't care whether someone's got a good or a bad product. I care about if someone's got a good or a bad attitude because if someone's got the right attitude, they'll be successful with or without me. I'll just get them there quicker. That's all I'm looking for. It's like seminars. You see people going to all these events. They're going to be successful regardless of the speaker. It may be that that speaker just gives them that little nugget that they need to take them to the next level. And that's all I'm offering. Offline, I mean, I do a little bit of offline, but I don't focus on it too much. It's not a predominant focus for me. I do, I do some speaking gigs, yes, and I am doing some speaking. So there is a little bit of that that I'm focusing on because I like it and I enjoy it. 
But apart from that, not really. SEO, I mean, look, I do good practice. I, I, I do the basics, but do I focus on a long-term SEO strategy? No, I don't. I don't care about it. I'm not going to be around long enough to give ranked in Google. Look at my competition. I'm fighting people like Wix and Squarespace and GoDaddy and they've got massive, massive budgets. I just take a crumb of what they've got through social media and pay-per-click and I'm happy. I'm, 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 I'm looking within my means. Word of mouth? Absolutely. Most of my stuff comes from word of mouth. I focus a lot of my attention on building good relationships with people because if I have a good relationship with someone, they're more likely to recommend me. This is the strongest form of advertising in the world. And it's free. Doesn't cost anything to get referral, word of mouth. Everyone, we do it all day long. Oh, have you seen this thing? Oh, have you seen that thing? Oh, have you checked this program out? Have you done this? Have you seen that? Always telling people about it. And then, yeah. Where are you focusing on? I focus on social media marketing, a little bit of speaking, and I focus on word of mouth. That's it. I don't need to focus on anything else. Why should I? It works. So just look at the focus. Where are you focusing? Where are you putting your attention? What are you doing in terms of admin, design, development, content, marketing, support, clients, research, design? Like, what are you doing? Where are you focusing your attention? Look at the marketing as well. Where are you focusing? Because when you focus, when you can hone down, when you can be specific, like if you say, oh, yeah, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, a strategic consultant. I'm an online um, marketing expert. No one gives a shit. No one cares if you're an online marketing expert. No one wants an online marketing expert. I'm a fucking Facebook ad ninja. I can take your Facebook account from zero to 100% ROI in six minutes because that's focused. Do you see what I mean? Like when you start to focus, when you start to drill down and you get away from this generic, like when you, when you can get really specific on what you're doing and how you're, how you're doing it in terms of your messaging, your content, your audience, like laser focused, who's your customer avatar? Exactly, who am I working with? What's my message to that person? What are my products and services? What's my content? What's my sales funnel? Like, focus on those areas. Build those areas out. Everything else will fall into place. Have an amazing weekend, and I will speak to you on Monday. My rambling has finished. I'm going to leave you in peace. Take care and have an amazing day. I'll speak to you soon. Bye-bye.